Good evening. The following is a live broadcast for the City of Kingsport Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Board meetings are regularly scheduled on the first and third Tuesdays of each month at 7 p.m. In advance of the BMA meeting, a copy of the agenda is available for inspection at the Kingsport Public Library, City Hall, or online at kingsporttn.gov. First order of business is uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. It will be led by the new Vision Youth, uh, and the, the, um, the person in charge of new Vision Youth is Miss Johnny Mae Swaggerty. He does a great job uh, with, the, with young people. And then please remain standing for the invocation to be led by Pastor Stephen Collins from the Kingsport Community Church. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for each and every person in this room tonight. I thank you for this council. Father, I thank you for the New Vision Youth. Father, I thank you for Officer Matt Craddock. And Father, most of all tonight, I thank you just for Kingsport. Thank you for this place and thank you for this people. I pray tonight, Lord, that we would relax into your presence and that you would guide and direct all of the conversation and all of the voting and everything that is done tonight lord may your holy spirit just cover this place and these people we love you i pray this in jesus name amen, amen. please be seated thank you pastor and thank you miss johnny may and the and thanks the, uh, great youth uh, madam recorder please take the roll mayor shul here vice mayor george here alderman duncan here alderman montgomery here Alderman Ulterman? Here. Alderman Phillips? Here. Thank you. By my reckoning, uh, six of the seven elected members are present. Uh, before I turn this over to the city manager, let me recognize the Sullivan County Commissioner, Mr. Joe Carr, uh, District 9, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, <coughs> Mr. City Manager. All right, we have one recognition on our agenda tonight, and it's a good one. So I'm going to ask uh, Officer Matt Craddock if he would please join Vice Mayor George at the podium. And Chief Fitt, if you'd like to join them as well, please come forward. I get to stand right here. I get to put my stuff there. You get to be right here where they all get to look and be impressed. <laughs> so I get to do this one. I'm really excited because, you know, I like to recognize people that are just absolutely good people and that set the standard for all of us that we all can be better people. And so tonight we're recognizing Matt Craddock and we're recognizing him for being recognized because Matt is the first recipient of the 2024 Fred Coleman Champion for Children Award given through the Children's Advocacy Center of Sullivan County. And, and he is the first, so he is setting this, the level. And just to tell you a couple things about him, he came to work for the Kingsport Police Department in March of 2021 um, from the Sheriff's Office um, he moved to the patrol division of Roosevelt Elementary at the beginning of 2023, and he serves there as a resource officer. So he is the one that is there working with our children. So, I mean, if you want somebody to be fantastic and set examples, you want them there with our kids. So it, he is like so much in the right place. His wife works in the records department, so she's with us too. Um, this award was named after Fred Cole, who was a dedicated volunteer and a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Center and its missions throughout his whole life until he passed away. And, and it recognizes a person who goes above and beyond to improve and positively impact the lives of children in need. And his co-workers at the school, Matt's co-workers, have said he just quickly like earned the trust of all the kids, and you can see they just adore him. And he has done like just nice acts just I mean randomly it says here you know that he's just been caught just like fixing people's bicycles and and helping the elderly and the grandparents and people kids check in and just 
I mean, he sets the example of what you want, like, a great person to be. And to be wearing uh, the uniform and representing the city and doing that and receiving this award, I mean, it, it, it is just wonderful for the city that you work for us. And um, they're also foster parents. I mean, like, they're like great parents, not just all the time. And it just says, you know, during your short tenure, you've made such a significant impact in your community. <coughs> and what we really want to say, I mean, you were recognized by them, but we want to recognize you here too because, as I said, this, this type of an award and what you do every day, I mean, I know you don't, you don't even think about this. You're just that person that sees something and think and does it. You don't even think. I mean, you're just that good of a person. And I wish we had, you know, 56,000 people like you in Kingsport. But it's wonderful that you're there. It's wonderful you're where you're at and setting the example and showing people that you can just be a great person and uplifting these kids and just helping. And uh, as I said, I'm just, I mean, I think we all appreciate people that, that do their job and do their job superb and go beyond. But what you do is not your job. I mean, it's, it's out of your heart and it shows it's such a service and it impacts these kids and it, it makes us look good. So, thank you. I'm incredibly um, thankful uh, that I get to work with people of character like Matt. Um, this story uh, goes a little bit deeper and, and I've okayed with Matt to, to share some of this. When he first went to Roosevelt, um, obviously he was dealing with children and a new environment coming from, from patrol. And uh, through his efforts, he got to experience a, a particular uh, child who was um, struggling at best. Uh, and struggling within the school, uh, discipline-wise, but it was being fostered out of a uh, bad home environment uh, to the point the state of Tennessee had to step in. And uh, so Matt and his lovely wife, Whitney, uh, being foster parents, opted to uh, become foster parents for this child. Uh, the discipline has reversed itself. He's a stellar student uh, and changed this one child's life forever and, um, and is deep in the process of ado adopting this child. So he was without question in the right place at the right time and I appreciate Matt's heart and being willing to go up there and step up and say uh, I'll, I'll be in the gap. So I appreciate Matt. Thank you. Thank you. you want to say anything? You think you're good? Okay. Thank you all you very much. <laughs> Matt well, said he saying. might want to sing the national anthem is what I heard. <laughs> Well, I was there when Matt got the award from the uh, Child Advocacy Center and uh, just a great couple and Roosevelt School is better for you being there. So thank you very much. Mr. Team Manager. All right, we have no appointments, so we'll move into the approval of minutes. Yeah. First, we have the April 1st, 2024 work session and then the April 2nd, 2024 business meeting. We'd ask that you approve these minutes as submitted, please. Thank you. The, each member has copies of the minutes. Uh, do I hear a, a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Olderman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Montgomery. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, each set of minutes passes 6-0, one absent. Thank you. Uh, and now we have no public hearings. We have the citizen comment section. Uh, citizens may speak on agenda items and issue-oriented items. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address and sign the register that is provided. You're encouraged to keep your comments non-personal in nature, and they should be limited to five minutes. A total of 30 minutes is allocated for public comment. Let, remind, let me remind our citizens, uh, this is the only portion of the meeting where you can come forward and speak to the board, but you can speak either on items on the agenda that we will deliberate and devote on tonight, or items of general public interest. Are there any citizens who wish to come forward? If not, I declare that part of the meeting to be adjourned, and uh, Mr. Team Manager. All right, we have two items up for second and final reading. The first is consideration of an ordinance to amend zoning of tax map 45B through K, parcels 8, 9, 
located along Spear Terrace Drive from the R1B Residential District and R1C Residential District to B3 Highway Oriented Business District. We'd ask that you approve this ordinance on second and final reading. Thank you. I remind our citizens that on a, a second reading ordinance, we have to uh, do a, a uh, roll call vote. A vote. Uh, Mr. Attorney, please publish. An ordinance to further amend the zoning code text and map to rezone property located along Severe Terrace Drive from the R1B Residential District and R1C Residential District to B3 Highway Oriented Business District in the 11th Civil District of Suffolk County. Six penalties for the violation of this ordinance and six to effective damages. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Phillips. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Olderman. Any discussion? Uh, again, we discussed this very thoroughly at the last meeting. This is the second reading. If no further discussion, uh, Madam Recorder, please take the vote. Alderman Duncan? Aye. Vice Mayor George? Aye. Alderman Montgomery? Aye. Uh, Alderman Osterman? No. Alderman Phillips? Aye. Mayor Cook? Aye. The item passes 6 0. Mr. C. Madison? This item is consideration of an ordinance to vacate Alley Right of Way located off of Amber Street. This one to be on second and final reading. We'd ask that you approve the ordinance vacating the alley. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Attorney, please publish. An ordinance to vacate a section of public right of way located off Amber Street situated in the City of Kingsport, 12th, 12th Civil District of Sullivan County, and six to effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by the Vice Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Duncan. Any discussion? If not, Madam Recorder, please take the vote. Alderman Duncan? Aye. Vice Mayor George? Aye. Alderman Montgomery? Aye. Alderman Osterman? Aye. Alderman Phillips? Aye. Mayor Cook? Aye. The item passes 6 0. Mr. C. Madison? All right, the next item is under new business, and this is consideration of a resolution to amend the Lynn Garden Redevelopment District and approve tax increment financing for the Friendship Dealership Project. As we discussed last night in the work session, this is a project that resides in the Lynn Garden Redevelopment District, something that was put in place back in December of 2021. Uh, we discussed last night also the concept that when this was first presented that there could potentially be additional phases that would come forward. As you see on the map here in front of you, this is the first phase of that redevelopment district, and this project lies within that district just off of West Green Drive. Additionally, what has been proposed, as you learned through the, uh, through the rezoning that occurred at our last meeting during that public hearing, uh, the plan is for this piece of property, which has been for sale and has been acquired by the Friendship dealership, to put a Hyundai dealership here, and the total estimated project cost is around $13 million, which would be a new investment uh, to this site. Initially, 25 jobs were proposed to be created, and the plan to grow that to 50 jobs in time. As we walked through this last night to kind of understand what the tax increment uh, financing would allow for this project, roughly $560,000 that would be made available. We looked at some of the TIF projects that we have historically <coughs> done in years past. This is probably on the lower end, and that is largely due to the increments and what the project would allow for that to do. This would be financed over a 25-year period. There is a 5% pullback, which means both the city and county will see an increase in the amount of taxes that they are currently receiving. Um, it's also important to note in a tax increment financing, financing project, it is the developer, the owner of the property, the one that is saying in this particular case, that bears the burden to ensure that this development will generate the necessary tax revenue that will come in on an annual basis to pay the, uh, the debt CHRA will secure. So uh, this is not a burden on the city, the county, or the housing redevelopment authority. This is purely a burden on the, the owner. Uh, in addition uh, to that, um, you know, the owner of the property will pay the full <coughs> taxes to the county, and then the increments necessary to pay off the uh, TIF would come back in. We anticipate, as we have seen in the 
ask that we always take a very conservative approach. And it is not uncommon to see the value of these properties grow beyond what was projected. In those situations, we see these PIP loans paid off sooner, and that then allows for both city and county to realize back into the general fund the full value of those taxes, those property taxes. This was approved by the Housing and Redevelopment Authority on, on the 8th of this month. You all receive it tonight. Thursday night, the county commission will also be taking the matter up as well. Why do we look at the, the request for TIF? Well, anytime you're in a redevelopment district, it is very different from a greenfield development. Um, you have a lot of additional costs necessary to get the project back to a point where you're coming up out of the ground. And that is definitely what we have seen here. The owner and developer have been very upfront with us regarding their overall expenditures. Nearly $3 million to get out of the ground, <coughs> dealing with asbestos, dealing with a tremendous amount of foundation, uh, utilities on the site that will need to be relocated, a host of things that warrant the need for uh, additional funds, which is quite honestly the, the foundation of why you have redevelopment districts to allow for a reuse of property and to be able to put some of the property tax money back towards that. Uh, they are estimating uh, to begin in 90 days or less, and they have a very aggressive schedule to get this thing open in the summer of 2025, and based upon what I have seen thus far, they are well on their way of being able to do that. Uh, so, Mayor, that is the, the item. Uh, that is the request. Again, we discussed it last night. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Susan Bauer with our Economic Development Office has been handling this project and has done an outstanding job of shepherding it through the administrative processes. Uh, he is here for questions as well. Mayor? And I always assume we have citizens that are watching this here on TV that are pretty new to these sports. So uh, a TIF, a tax increment financing, is only applicable to a redevelopment zone, correct? Typically that is what you see. Uh, in a redevelopment district, also something called industrial development board tips which are used throughout the state and they don't necessarily have to be in the redevelopment district. Okay. Okay. Of course uh, we've used tips in the past as you, you've uh, pointed out. Uh, let me get the attorney to publish and then we'll see if we have some more discussion on this. Mr. Attorney, please publish. A resolution approving a tax income of financing amendment to the Lynn Garden Redevelopment District Springfield dealership project and recommending the same be approved by the Board of Commissioners to solve the question. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Montgomery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Olderman. Now, discussion. Well, it's a great project. And yeah, so, it is. Uh, we'll yeah, be yeah. glad if uh, yeah. we can get this pushed yes, through and get yes, this sir. done. Yeah, it's a big I, I, I agree with my colleague. It's a uh, big project. It's a huge force. I'll just add what I added last night because I think the single most important thing the city manager said is that <coughs> when we're using this TIF, we are not losing tax dollars. That's right. We are actually gaining tax dollars, um, but the way the TIF is set up is so that we don't lose what we're currently collecting. Now, in my personal opinion, you know, a TIF wouldn't be needed if this was a flat piece of property on Stone Drive. You know, this is, there are, and, and Chris mentioned this, there are so many factors involved in how much it's going to cost just to get to the point that you could put a shovel in the ground and start building a building. That is why this makes 100% complete sense. And, and you know, this is a perfect example of what a TIF should be used for. And, and, the, and the second point I do want to make is that, um, you know, I think um, when, now I know people who comment online read the paper, but if you had read through the paper, you would have seen that it was a 25-year tip, but that is not set in stone. That could be sooner, and I think, um, now I don't, I don't, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but I, I think about the Westgate one. That one paid off how many years quicker than it was supposed to? Do you remember off the top of your head? I mean, it was quite a few years faster. They had a schedule. Yeah, and so I don't want to put you on the spot, but I mean, that's an example of you know, a TIF may be for 25 years, but um, if this is successful and this goes and that pays off, you know, it's done much quicker than that, could be. 
um, you know, or it may go 25, but I, mean, I think I heard earlier, typically these could be anywhere from 20 to 30, so right in the middle. So I, I just, I think this is a great deal, and I'm excited for it to be here in Kingsport. And you're referring to Eastern, Eastern Commons, which would pay yes. off. Yes, East Commons, yeah. yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. working on and, and looking at putting a new school in that area, that to have the first person go in and take an area and invest and make a difference. And being first to go in is a lot harder than once other people have started improving, adding jobs, cleaning up, getting property back and improving, then other people will also need to invest and we'll see some turnarounds quicker in this neighborhood. Great comments. We can both make sure that the sales tax is a cause of this thing. Well, um, I, I think Vice Mayor put her finger on it that, uh, that you know we operate in a in a, in a private sector uh, free enterprise economy, but this could well be the catalyst to new development of that area. And that was our goal. You know, we declared it a new development zone. Uh, any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? It passes 6-0. Ms. Freemandrick. Next item, consideration of a resolution to add correctional officers to the mandatory retirement provision established pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated Section 8-36-205. Uh, as you all know, when uh, a year ago when we re-entered the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System, we also went re-entered the Public Safety Grid. Law now allow for correctional officers to be part of that bridge program, and so the approval of this will amend our existing uh, agreement that we have that will allow those individuals to uh, be able to take advantage of the public safety grid. You can see the cost there at the bottom, which is uh, very nominal. And we'd ask that you approve this, allowing that to occur. I'm looking at our police chief. Chief, how many officers do you have that are designated? As Please publish a resolution to add correctional officers to the mandatory retirement provision established pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated Section 8-36-205. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by the Vice Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Oldman. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes 6-0. Ms. Freemandrick. This item is consideration of a resolution to apply for and accept $500,000 Brownfield Redevelopment Grant. We first learned of this grant last year. This was an item that Governor Lee put forward in the current fiscal year budget as an opportunity to aid the Brownfield Redevelopment Project. Uh, they have now opened that up. We are seeking a grant to help with Camp Hill. The basis of this grant should be phases of development that could take place there and by development I'm referring to parks, roads, parking lots, those kinds of things. So as you know we have a very exciting conceptual plan. Uh, we now have to take that conceptual plan to get it to the Department of Engineering behind it and that will help us understand what future phases could cost and what would be the best approach to move forward with uh, in regards to that. You've been with the city a few years. Have you ever received Brownfield grant, something that at least resembles this? Well, we have received uh, different types of Brownfield grants over the years, Madam Chief. Ed. This one is a little different in terms of what it's intended for, um, but it's uh, it's a you know very popular uh, program across the state to take Brownfields and look for ways to redevelop those. And, and uh, I applaud the, the governor's office for making this available. I hope this is something we see in return would certainly be a great use for us. Uh, Mr. Kearney, please publish a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute all documents necessary and proper to apply for and receive a Tennessee Brownfield Redevelopment Area Grant. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Phillips. Is there a second? Second. Second. I think the beach is off. 
Second by Alderman Duncan. Uh, any discussion? Just if we receive this, this will not be, these funds will not be used to do the ballot, but this is going to be getting all the engineering studies, all the work done so that we can, that we, this, this will just cover that part of it. Yeah, that, there's a possibility that there'll be some funds left over that could go into the capital okay. project for that, but I think for the most part, you know, what I was kind of curious as we're doing is this is that first step to launching our plan for doing the capital work. To give us all the documentation that we need to be able to move forward with additional grants, additional funding, and be in, in a good place to receive extra money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, the issue, I assume the acceptance fee is to bind us to do the first two <coughs> Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, passes 6-0. Mr. City Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution to utilize Omnia Partners contract number 201700-1134 to purchase playground equipment for Riverview Park. As you all know, you recently approved the receipt of $80,000 in a built environment grant determined that those dollars would be used to replace some aging playground equipment at Riverview. The total cost of that is just shy of 60000 and the remaining amount of dollars for that as part of that $80,000 grant will go towards the installation. We anticipate beginning work on that this summer. So that concludes the resolution authorizing the purchase of that. Great. Uh, Mr. Attorney, please publish. A resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a purchase order to Game Time Incorporated for the purchase of selected playground equipment through Omnia Partners Cooperative Agreement number 201-700-1134. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Montgomery. Is there a second? Second. Second by the Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Any question? And this would be a replacing this equipment. I apologize because I left early last night. What happens to the equipment we're replacing? Is that something that's sold as surplus or does it get moved somewhere else? Or My supporters have been anxious to talk all night. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yield my time to him. To, uh, Assistant City Manager for Ranger yeah, Service. Yeah, Come around, boy. No, ma'am. Those, uh, those pieces of equipment have served their useful life. And so it's um, right now we've looked and our maintenance team has done a great job of of fixing up what we can, but the pieces identified specifically were those that we identified there at the end of their useful life, so we'll be taking those out and they will just be discarded. Discarded. Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion? <coughs> if not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, pass the 6 0. Mr. City Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign utilization consent agreement and issue a purchase order for five Ram Flowmaster 3500 high roof 11 passenger van from the Georgia State contract number 99999 SPD SPD 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 again. Uh, I think I mentioned to you all, and I actually just asked when I was at your last board meeting to uh, consolidate some old grants that had been issued to us on behalf of the state of Tennessee, Georgia Public Transit Administration for the acquisition of some rolling stock. Unfortunately, for several years now, really post-pandemic, our ability to find rolling stock uh, that would fit our size transit system has been extremely difficult. Staff was very pleased to be able to report out uh, early this month that uh, van, actually last month, that a vehicle had been identified that we could purchase. And even probably more exciting than that is that they'll be here in 30 days. Um, and so if you have seen, in fact, we have an item coming up later, six to eight month delivery time, most of our stuff has been averaging uh, six to eight months, sometimes longer, depending on the vehicle. Some of our buses that we have bought have had almost a 12 month lead time. So, this is a, a good vehicle for us. It will meet the needs of our fixed route as well as our shared transit service. Uh, again, the overwhelming majority of the total cost is, is funded through uh, SBA and the state of Tennessee and a small percentage being the local match. And so, we're glad to bring these to you. Uh, the vehicles 
we have now have reached the end of their useful life. They can be surplus and we, we can move on with those. So when you say fair expense, it, it, it means these vehicles will accommodate people that have an injury from a building. That's correct. Yeah, so we're not going to use these vehicles. Okay, uh, let me get it on the floor. Mr. Uh, Gurney, please serve us. A resolution authorizing the purchase of five Ram Promaster 3500 high roof 11 passenger vans from Creative Bus Sales, utilizing Georgia State contract number 99999 SPD, that's SPD 0000212-0005, and authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with the state of Georgia Department of Administrative Services as a purchase order for Creative Bus Sales Incorporated for the purchase. Uh, thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, moved by the Vice Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Montgomery. Uh, any discussion? Uh, you know, the, uh, maybe to some citizens this Georgia state contract thing would jump out, but this is a common thing where we tag in with other governments and get a better deal on something. It, it is. It's, uh, you see that often. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes 6 0. Mr. City Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution to purchase <coughs> 20 2024 Ford and Chevy utility all wheel drive vehicles from the Tennessee State contract number 8355. Uh, you'll see here in the middle of the action form uh, the breakdown of those. Uh, we have 12 that are. Placement vehicles, as we discussed last night, typically six to eight. If this so happens uh, this year, uh, we're looking at 12 that are actually coming up for renewal. Of course, then we've added SROs as a result of a, a, a state funding that was made available this year. So those individuals will be provided a vehicle, and then we're replacing a vehicle that has been wrecked. So that gives you a total of 20. Uh, you can see. Recommendation memo here, what the vehicle looks like. This is the general fairly standard for all law enforcement. And a lot of this is simply due to the amount of gear that we require our officers to carry. Most patrol station SUVs require to carry as well. And so this will kind of accommodate that. How fast are these? <laughs> well, it's going to take you for a ride. Here. How many will be able to carry this vehicle? How many will carry it? See if I offer Some, uh, to test drive, but the city manager hadn't gotten back to me yet on that. <laughs> we don't discuss those topics. <laughs> uh, Mr. Attorney, please serve us. A resolution authorizing the purchase of 20 2024 Ford Interceptor Utility all-wheel drive vehicles from Lonnie Cobb Ford, utilizing Tennessee State Contract Number 80355, and authorizing the city manager to execute a purchase order for the same. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Duncan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Olderman. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes 6 0. Mr. City Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution to authorize the reimbursement of the Sheriff's Agreement Funds to Magnolia Ridge Development, LLC, related to the Magnolia Ridge <coughs> Phase 2 development. Uh, this is utility agreement reimbursement or materials, materials agreement reimbursement in the amount of $47,900. Once that is closed out, minus the taxes and adjustments, the vehicle developer is due there $43,787.28. Uh, this will, uh, as you all know, the uh, process, the uh, city manager will approve these on the front end, and then the board will approve the uh, purchase or the, uh, the disbursement of the funds to the developer. That is what this action form is doing. I would ask that you approve the resolution authorizing the issue. Uh, Mr. Attorney, please serve us. 
A resolution authorizing reimbursement of materials agreement funds to Magnolia Ridge Development LLC for the Magnolia Ridge Phase Two development. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Uh, Second. Uh, <laughs> brought to the floor by the uh, Vice Mayor, seconded by Alderman Phillips. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The pass is 6 0. Commissioner Manager. Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution for authorization to sign application and contract with Norfolk State Junior College for the Title I Workforce Innovation Opportunities Act program to proceed as a grant. It is in partnership with Norfolk State Community College. As our HR Director Tyler Pistol described last night, this is a goal to try to uh, engage uh, the people of workforce where they're at, either through state or within our area and an opportunity to try to address staffing needs that we have with the city, many of which are temp uh, positions that we would see a need to fill over the summer, but there's also opportunities for some of our other full-time positions. Uh, the city have discussed with you all in great detail the labor market remains very tight. Anything that we can do to draw attention to uh, the career of the city of Kingsport and things come from that. Yeah, I, I think this has a lot of promise. And, uh, yeah. and Alderman Duncan, you want to remind folks what happened with Northeast State here recently? Oh, well, they uh, got uh, Community College of the Year. Yeah. From Nashville, that's when, I guess, about three weeks ago. So it's well-deserved. And been Between great old buddies. Yeah. And I appreciate buddies you and representing and us. Old uh, buddies. And, uh, yep. Is that McCoy? Yeah, Jeff McCoy. Yeah. Dr. McCoy. Dr. McCoy. Uh, Mr. Attorney, please publish. A resolution authorizing the mayor to execute all documents necessary and proper to receive a Tennessee Department of Labor, Tennessee Youth Employment Program Grant, Title I WIOA through Northeast State Community College. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Montgomery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Duncan. Any discussion? Again, I think this has a lot of promise. Uh, if no further discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The pass is 6-0. Mr. City Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution to award the RFP for the Optimized Benchmark Assessment Program to Instructure, Inc. and authorizing the mayor to sign all applicable documents as provided in Act 1 of the Board of Education. We'd ask that you approve the resolution authorizing the purchase. Yeah, again, with the idea of the OSU citizens, uh, Tennessee, the Board of Education, which is elected in its own right, uh, when it has significant financial matters that they approve, it still has to come to us for a final approval, and that includes their budget, which is fairly considerable, of course. Uh, Mr. Attorney, please publish. A resolution awarding a proposal for customized benchmark assessment program to Instructure Incorporated and authorizing the mayor to sign an agreement for the same and all documents necessary and proper to effectuate the purpose of the agreement. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Alderman Montgomery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Phillips. Uh, if, is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes 6-0. Mr. City Manager. Next item is consideration of a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase an Akamaj interactive 3D anatomy dissection table for the Kingsport City Schools Career and Technical Education Department. This is also an item coming to us from the Board of Education. And we'd ask that you approve the resolution authorizing the purchase. Thank you, Mr. Attorney, please publish. A resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a purchase order to Anatomage Incorporated for an interactive 3D virtual dissection table for Kingsport City Schools utilizing TIP GSA contract 230105. Thank you, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Uh, moved by Alderman Phillips. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman Montgomery. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes 6 0. Thank you, Mayor Wise. Mayor Wise. She was involved in this? Yes. She was the head of the school. Oh, yes, yeah, she was. Yeah. yeah. I got this. Um, so, uh, I had to give her a little. 
he did a fine job. Yeah. The old okay. was in charge of the CP from uh, Mississippi Mandy. All right, they've added to the consent agenda. You have two items on the agenda. The first is consideration of the resolution to reject the sole bid for the phase two Phoenix Rear sewer lighting project. Second is consideration of a resolution ratifying the mayor's signature on the official certification of local government approval for a post Cleveland Ministry to lead the 2024 emergency solutions grant application. Be happy to pull either one of those for additional discussion. If not, we'd ask that you approve the consent agenda as presented, please. Uh, are there any members that wish to discuss uh, either one or both the items separately? If not, is there a motion to approve? the motion that we approve the consent agenda with both items as presented. I'll Thank second. You. Thank you. The, it was moved by the vice mayor and seconded by Alderman Alderman. Uh, any discussion? If not, Madam Recorder, please take the vote. Alderman Duncan? Aye. To both. Vice Mayor George? Aye. To both. Alderman Montgomery? Aye. To both. Alderman Ulterman? Aye. To both. Alderman Phillips? Aye to both. Mayor Schultz? Aye to both items. Therefore, each item passes 6-0 as presented. Mr. City Manager. All right, we now move to the communication. Ms. Mayor, I don't have this one, so I'll pass it over to you. You don't have anything? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say something for you? Again, we, we can't control everything that happens to private economy, and you wouldn't want us to, like I said, to do this, but we, we can kind of help, help get a little boost every now and then. Uh, I'm going to start with Alderman Montgomery then. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as we all know, Kelsey and Phoenix Ward is working, recognizing April as Child Abuse Prevention Month, and they are encouraging everyone to wear blue in the workplace on Friday. On Friday, yeah. It just so happens that James and I and, and the city yeah, manager decided to do it tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. <laughs> we got to know you. And also they are, they are hosting a lunch and learn on child abuse, same subject as prevention, on April 30th, 1130 to 1 o'clock at the chamber. If any child abuse and building strong, safe, and healthy children is the subject matter. Uh, as a form of a date to remember, on April 27th, the ALS walk will start at Queen Court Chamber at 9 o'clock. Again, the ALS walk will start at 9 o'clock at Chamber on the 27th. And the Pharmacy Fit program will begin on May the 4th at Queen Court Pharmacy Fit. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, James? Okay, I just have two items. Uh, first, I, th I think it was talked about a lot tonight um, in the discussion of the uh, redevelopment district of Lynn Garden, but I just wanted to mention um, about Lynn Garden. You know, in, in 2021, we passed the uh, turning that into a redevelopment district. And so that was done, I think, in large part because so many citizens in that area mm -hmm. and who'd grown up there wanted to see Lynn Garden restored to what it, what it once was and um, to kind of weed out some problems that had been going on out there. And so I think we heard a lot of citizens ask for a solution. And when we, when we accomplished this, turning this into a redevelopment district, it was widely praised. I mean, everybody was very excited about it because of the potential that it had to bring redevelopment into Lynn Garden. Now, since that time, um, as the city manager has pointed out, and we've heard presentations on, code enforcement's been up there. We've been putting a large effort into helping the Lynn Garden community. Um, so when you add that, and then you've got a new school, new elementary school that's going to be going in up there, um, and then you have, as we've said tonight, you have a, a private business who is willing to invest $13 million into a redevelopment um, of a site that has had 250 fire and EMS calls in the last two years, 750 police calls, 750 plus police calls in the last two years, 
Um, I feel like that's a very positive way to kick off redevelopment in Hanley Garden. And I, as every as many people on this board have said, I think this is a major first step. I'm I'm very excited about the direction of the redevelopment that's going in Hanley Garden. I have told multiple people with the school going in there and other things that are going on. Um, as a developer, I would look in the Wind Garden area, and that's not something I would have said in the previous years. So I, I think I, I'm proud of what this board's done, but also keep in mind a point that the mayor made is that it's a private business that drives this. Um, we can help, but it is private business that drives this. And so I just, um, I think we've taken some steps in the right direction, and I'm excited about that. And Courtney, you too. Well, I, yeah. I was in the Army and the, the, the four-year time was very measured, but uh, we didn't even replenish Wing Garden until we paid five and six for it, didn't we? I think it was around that time. Yeah. 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 It was right in that range. So I wasn't the, here when they did it. So the reason I make that point is, is that whole section of the city evolved and grew in a different way from that core city that, that uh, goes back to 1970 or so. Uh, I, I just think this is one of the most significant actions so go ahead, Sam. Okay, and, and so my final point was, um, I made this point last night, but I just wanted to reiterate it here for you two and TV, is that um, this board um, and this city staff have diligently, I feel like, worked on moving this city forward. Every Ever since I've been on the board, almost five years now, and most of us came on together, and Paul's been here two years now, and so I think that the most frustrating part for me about city government is how slow it moves. As a person who's in private business, it drives me crazy. Colette always says, if I decide I wanna build a building, I go build a building. That's what I do. But unfortunately, city government doesn't work that way. So, you know, we have been laying the foundations and I feel like in, in 2025, these are the things that are scheduled to open, new things in the city of Kingsport in 2025. First, the Main Street rebuild is supposed to be finished. The IMAX Theater is opening in 2025. The Rural King is opening in 2025 at the mall, plus three new restaurants at the mall. Right there is millions of dollars of investment in the mall opening in 2025. Then you've got, we talked about the new Hyundai dealership opening in 2025. Phase one of Brickyard is supposed to be completed in 2025. So that is adding hundreds of new residents into downtown. And then at Bays Mountain, you've got the Fox Den Playground and the Observation Tower will be completed in 2025. And then we, right here at the tail end, we're sliding in in 2024, the Academy Sports is opening up and the dental clinic will be opening up in 2024. So in the fall of this year, those two items. So while it may not be as fast as everyone always wants, there are a lot of good things that years of legwork have been done that are gonna be uh, you know, opening up and happening in 2025. So um, I, I hope that this is a continuation of you know, years of laying groundwork that these things are gonna start, start continuously happening. But I think there's a lot of positives happening in Kingsport right now. And while we may not see them opening, things I just named off are gonna make a lot of ribbon cuttings for people to go to in 2025. So I'm happy about the way things are going in Kingsport right now. That's it. Okay, good speech. You want me to come back to you later? No, 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 <laughs> no, that's all I got. Tommy? Well, mine's gonna be rather simple. I'm real proud of Dobby Bennett's baseball team. They seem to be putting a bummer to everybody. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> good. Soccer team's doing good. Yeah, the soccer team. Yeah, they're they're just turning a new leaf, I think. They get their football straightened out. Uh, mm -hmm. then, then we'll be ready to roll. Is okay. lacrosse is lacrosse the spring sport? Is it? They're not there. Yet. They're well, not here in the classes yet. I hope they're not there yet. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have to talk to them about it. Yeah. Lacrosse has some really good athletes. Okay. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay. Chuck. Tommy, I wore your maroon for you. Okay, tonight, so. thank you. Uh, just a few quick items here. The Kingsport Arts Festival uh, starts uh, Friday and goes from 8.30 to 10. And then Saturday is 10 to 5. And so it runs down Market and uh, Shelby. 
And so uh, they've got a parade. It was light up tonight. And so I think it starts around 8.30, and that'll be uh, down on Market Street at some point, but I'm not sure. So Saturday when you're out and you're at the Arts Festival, then be sure to get your ticket for the Loft Tour. There's seven properties downtown, and it's a fundraiser for DKA. And uh, that's always a fun event. It's on the inside of uh, downtown living. And then uh, the tour experience every day. And then last night we really had, uh, really, the work session. For people that don't come to the work session, it's always, I think, the meat and bones of, of what is being discussed. And so I would encourage people to come to the work session. But uh, Ryan and Nikki Enter last night gave us a really up, uh, good update on uh, infrastructure and keeping us in compliance with that and then looking out for our city's needs and so uh, always look forward to those uh, those updates from that and then we did have a lengthy discussion on uh, TIF last night and so uh, uh, where that was broken down and the city manager went through that uh, we are uh, as uh, James said I mean we're getting more tax money out of this even with the TIF and we've got Commissioner car here with us now so we hope that he can kind of work with us and push that on through with us so we appreciate you being here and then finally we've had uh, two uh, cleanups through KKV in the last two weeks and these numbers are astounding so in between Lynn Garden and um, this past week was downtown 24 tons 24 tons of trash and garbage was picked up it was an excessive amount of pallets uh, downtown uh, this past week, and uh, somebody just moved a whole apartment out on the street, I think. So uh, we appreciate everything that uh, Sharon Hayes does with KKB and uh, working with that. And, and this the volunteers. week, the volunteers, we had over 30 uh, for Lynn Garden, and then this week I didn't see exactly how many that we had. You said 35. 35, so that's right. And then, uh, so uh, this week is at Riverview. Hope we have a good yeah. turnout for that. Mm -hmm. I'll be cleaning for the uh, loft tour, I'm sure, and probably won't make it myself. But <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Douglas will put me to work, I think. So. But anyway, uh, we uh, do appreciate everything that they do. And that's 24 extra tons of trash that will still be, still be on the ground for them. That's good. That's it? That's it. I think Kristen's got a flyer out today, or maybe she's got to get her new matching dress too. So appreciate you being out today. Yes, ma'am. I hope we get the otters in 2025 too. <laughs> I asked if I could say that, and I was told I couldn't say anything about otters yet. <laughs> but if we get to their habitat, we'll be at least one of them. That's right. Really that's good. Right. So there's a lot going on with those now. Um, but we also have a lot going on with our visitor bureau. A lot of athletes are going to be in town. April 20th to 27th, we actually know we'll have 400 people and I don't know how many dogs because we're having the American Griffith Club at Metaview. So it said they're planning on having over 400 people and if you haven't been to a dog show there and went and watched one, it was, it was a lot of fun and um, really entertaining. It was. And Griffiths are like little greyhounds. They're fast. Yeah, so it should be a really I mean, it's, it's really cool that they're doing that. We also have the Appalachian Athletic Conference for the Men's Volleyball Championship will be here from April 18th through the 20th. And the um, baseball champion at Hunter Wright Stadium will be April 30th through May 4th. And we have the Appalachian Conference softball champions at Brickyard from April 30th to May 3rd. So we're going to have a lot of um, athletes here touring our area. And I think the tickets are on sale for Racks by the Tracks and also on our Fun Fest lineup with Al. Yeah. The tickets are on sale for Fun Fest. And um, we've got just a lot of good things going on. It's great. Oh, and it's sunshine, and I'm so happy. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, James, you, you, your points were well taken about uh, the progress being made in the city. Uh, it, it is a, just a fact of life that government can move slower, but. Uh, we have constraints by federal regulations, state regulations, and uh, 
And when I think about uh, one of our primary missions, maintaining the infrastructure, there's a lot of careful, deliberate planning that goes into that, and, and I'd rather it uh, be done right than it be done in a hurry that, uh, that we didn't do it, do it right. So I appreciate that. And again, our communications department is just excellent. They've really stepped up their game this, uh, over the last year in particular, and there's all a wealth of information that you can get by going to the city website or to thisisfoodcourt.com. Times News reports regularly on city activities, so don't rely on social media. Rely on, on your good source, and if you have questions about it, we're, we're open to answering questions, particularly at this table. Uh, again, appreciate uh, Commissioner Carr, District 9, from being here. The, the redevelopment zone is right there in his district, and I know he has an intense interest. And I, unless there's any alibis here, I'm going to call it adjourned. Jim. Thank you for joining us tonight for the Kingsport BMA meeting. This program has been a production of the City of Kingsport in cooperation with Milligan Productions, Milligan University, and Charter Communications. For more information, visit kingsporttn.gov.